Five things that we learned out of the election before I get into all of the other hot takes that are around in the next little while. Number one, Labor's win was built off a Greens surge. Now, credit to, I think, one opinion poll, might have been the Channel 9 one, that actually showed the Greens vote on the march, particularly in Queensland. Now, you've heard this point being made all day. Can I actually show you some numbers? So, Labor's primary vote was 32.8, Greens was 12. Labor went backwards, just nationally, and the Greens went forward. Now, again, I'm not putting an asterisk on the win. Albo's the Prime Minister, they're the government. But they are, in my view, the wolf in the hen house. The Greens won seats off Labor. So at the moment, they might help you get to government, but at some point, they're going to start to chew away at government. Let's have a look at it uh, state by state. Labor, down in New South Wales, but the Greens went up. In Victoria, Labor, down, but the Greens went up. In Queensland, they went up, as did the Greens, by an even bigger margin. In South Australia, Labor went down, the Greens went up, and, of course, it was a mega night in Western Australia where it's fairly obvious they had anything to do with Liberal. The colour blue should be banned in Western Australia, as I'm sure the Emperor and now his Prime Minister might be able to do. And in Tasmania... Labor made a really stupid policy when it comes to uh, uh, the forestry industry and Tasmania, if it was paying attention in the final days. Well, it, it didn't buy into Labor, but it did buy into the Greens. So that's the first thing. Second one, and this cannot be mucked around with, it can't be talked down, it is the reality of the election. Women in Australia went hard left. They didn't go left, they went hard left. They went hard left when it came to the Teals, they went hard left when it comes to the Greens. Not all women, of course, there were people who voted Palmer and Hanson and Liberal and Labor, but come on, the actual sliding scale of this election was women, 35, 55, we've talked about this for months, this was the baked-in part of the result. This was the part that was always going to be the case. And to give you an idea again, in the Resolve poll... And Ipsos, it looked to this factor before the election. Now, obviously, we don't get results on who actually voted which way and what way because, of course, it's a secret ballot and all the rest of it. But the national vote, according to um, Resolve, for the Greens was 14, but for women, it was 19. In Ipsos, it was 10 overall, but for women, it was 16. So even if these numbers are off by one or two points, you can see that there is a higher proportion of support for the Greens among female voters. Another thing here, people love voting local. They love voting for a local mayor. They love voting for a local doctor. They love voting for insert local Olympian, former Olympian or hero. And this isn't just because of the Teals. This isn't to say that the MPs that lost weren't good locals, but part of the specific marketing that the independents were able to pull off was we are of here for here. Now, I don't believe it, but still, that's the reality. That message worked. And it is a message that, let's not muck around, also worked in Western Sydney because Di Lee of the community was the one who took a seat that the Labor Party took for granted at such an extent that they thought they could drop in a Sheila from central casting over from Scotland Island because the Northern Beaches wasn't good enough for her. But this phenomenon has been going on in Australian politics for a long time. Andrew Wilkie's been an MP for a long time. As has Bob Catter, who has been a local person standing up and going hard year after year. Rebecca Sharkey, it goes on and on. So while I think it's a good thing for the major political parties that they don't have to fight for the inner city votes because there's always more votes in the suburbs and the regions, essentially now rich people have their own political party. What, of course, is the disappointing factor for those of you who thought that it would end up being a hung parliament and the Simon Says party would end up getting a say in anything. If the argument was you have to get rid of a moderate Liberal MP because they don't get the results that we need out of government, well, guess what? You just elected people who now are not needed to form government, which means they'll give great speeches on Radio National and stand in the parliament, and most likely all of them get re-elected at the next election. But they're not part of the government. They are literally passengers in the process. And that's great for those that are incredibly wealthy and able to not care what the result of government is. But the result of government will, in the next three years, have serious consequences for the people in the suburbs, for the locals in the suburbs. Meantime, 
One Nation won the Freedom Party vote. A lot of conversation about was it going to be Clive, was it going to be Lib Dems, all the rest. Here are the actual numbers, okay? Nationally, One Nation up almost two points. United Australia Party almost got to one point and Lib Dems basically went from nothing to 1.7. So, in my view, One Nation clearly wins. When you have a look at New South Wales, One Nation surged by 3.5%, which is a huge result for them to 4.8%. Tens of millions of dollars, Palmer is at 4%. The Lib Dems were able to go from nothing to 2%. In Victoria, One Nation went up 2.7% to 3.7%. They were second, though, to the UAP, who were also up at 48 and the Liberal Democrats was 27 The best state of all was Queensland. Now, right now, tonight, uh, there is uh, predictions on at least the ABC's computer thingy that um, Pauline Hanson is leading and can get that final Senate spot. Who knows exactly what ends up happening? But what an incredible feat, because not only would she be returned to the parliament, but there is a chance of a senator from New South Wales and a senator from South Australia coming to One Nation, putting them at a block of four Now, Labor plus Greens plus Lambie, the numbers might be irrelevant, but that shows a surge. There is a chance of a Palmer person coming up in the Senate, I think, in Victoria. As for South Australia, One Nation's vote was up 4%. In Tasmania, they were up as well, despite the fact the UAP was down and Western Australia is its own country. So, fifth and final for me. Where to for the Libs? Now... What the lefties want us to do is to tear ourselves apart for their very own amusement. They want us to pretend that somehow it's all over, it's all broken, it never happens again. Well, what did I tell you after 2019? No win is forever and no loss is forever. You know that in places like Queensland, you can go from a Tarago to government in one term. It might be one, it might be three, who knows? But the next three years are going to be really tough. I stand by everything I've said for the past six weeks. I firmly believe the result of the change of government is going to be higher inflation, the supply chain, because China is shut down, will get worse, and interest rates will go through the roof. It's not being unkind. It's just I'm not going to play this game where supposedly one half of Australia or a third of Australia needs to go and play sook for the next three years. No way. We believe in things. We voted for what we believe in yesterday. We didn't get enough people to agree, and that means that we are powerless in terms of forming laws for the next three years. But we're not powerless in a free society. In a free society, you are allowed to question the government. No matter what newfangled ways they'll come at us, we fight. We fight every day, but we also have to be honest about what just happened, which was we just lost a fight. Badly. So a couple of off-the-top-of-my-head early thoughts before we get into the machinations of what happens for the next three years and beyond. Number one, all politics is local, so please pick your candidates early. You have to find the local councillor, the local mayor, the local copper, all of these people, right? And tonight we've got a great guest on the show who's been doing this for a long time. But you don't pick them at five minutes to midnight, you pick them with two years to go so you can run the other person down. That's what you do. You also need to pull your thumb out of your backside, Liberal Party, and start actually being competitive at local council elections. The problem with so many people on the right is they think the first game you play in politics is the grand final, where all you do is run for the Senate. Here's an idea first. Raise some money, become a local councillor, become a mayor, and then after a couple of terms, have a crack at the state, and if that doesn't work out, a couple of years after that, you have a crack at the federal. You don't start at the grand final. And if the party is in trouble, it's in trouble because it ignores what the Greens have done for 30 freaking years. And the Labor Party has been phenomenal at for a long period of time, and it's one of the reasons why they are particularly so lo- so strong at state government. Second one, focus on family. Now, family doesn't mean mum, dad, 2.4. It can be anything. It can be two Sheilas, it can be two blokes and a dog, it can be an Islamic family who believe that their faith is more important than anything else. It can be every... It is not the family of a poster from 20 years ago. But focus on family. Celebrate family. Say it's good to be a family. Say it's a good thing for your kids to be a family, to be part of a family. Also, don't be afraid to draw a contrast to Labor. 
Now, this is where I will touch a little bit on where things have been for the past couple of days with people saying that, you know, some sort of Goldilocks approach. We need to be a bit more this. We need to be a little less that. We need to be a little less this. We need to be a little bit more that. No, no, no. What you need to do at some point in time is draw a contrast to the Labor Party. Now, you can pick whatever that is, and that's for the people who are in the party to make the decision rather than making that decision tonight. But be a contrast. And you know what? You might lose the next election. But at least there is a very obvious choice, one versus the other. And finally, whoever the leader is, for God's sake, back them quickly. I had a couple of people come and talk to me who clearly were of a certain faction last night trying to say this and trying to say that and said, you know what? Pull your thumb out, back someone in, because the thing that the Liberal Party is great at is you being able to cross the floor. The thing that they're really bad at is letting everyone have an opinion on everything publicly. One of the very few things that I envy about the Labor Party is that they have a caucus system where Penny Wong had to pretend she was against gay marriage for three years. I'd like to see that on the conservative side of politics. Because while at its fundamental, the free speech and the dissent is all part of the system, guess what it looks like? To your political opponents, weakness, confusion. Crossing the floor is something that you should be able to do and not lose your space in the parliament. But if it becomes something you do to save your seat week after week after week, then it's going to cause problems for the overall team. So I repeat, welcome to the resistance each and every night at eight o'clock. Because we'll be here and we will never give up.